With everyone feeling and seeing the effects of COVID-19, one of the most noticeable areas, especially in small towns, is their main street. In Red Wing, Minnesota, the downtown streets are empty and almost every storefront is filled with temporary or permanent closure signs. The local businesses and their owners are a vital part of the infrastructure that keeps Red Wing running and their absences are felt by all. Let's talk to local restaurant owner Danielle Flechek and get her thoughts on the current shutdown and its effects. We own a restaurant in Red Wing, Minnesota. It is like a from scratch kitchen um, and craft menu, um, Chef John here. And I do the front of house. John takes care of all the kitchen. He had to make changes immediately. Um, I believe it was like March 16th. Um, we didn't really expect the closing to happen. Um, we decided to go do the takeout option instead of the dine-in um, immediately just because we still needed, you know, the income coming in while we figured the rest out. We lost a lot of our sales because of alcohol sales. So at the start, we weren't able to do like wine bottles or beer for the takeout. So we lost an enormous amount of sales from that alone. We lost 75% of our sales. Yeah, 75% of the sales immediately. Well, with the change of the restaurants due to the COVID, um, we are expecting to have to be making changes anyways coming up. So we're really working on game planning, what it's going to be like when it's open. So as much as we're enjoying some free time with the family, um, we're still trying to work really hard at changing the restaurant for the future, um, which is requiring a lot of meetings with accountants and banks and vendors. And so we're staying pretty busy, um, just a different kind of busy. We miss everyone. We're so thankful for you know all the support they've given us through the years, but it really shows right now the support they really want to give you like it means so much more than just coming in and having glass wine and entree like you know we're so thankful to be in this community even the people from like the twin cities and stuff you know it's they've been amazing to help us get through this um whether it be sending money or buying gift cards or just saying nice words and you know keeping us afloat i guess it's really hard to get down and depressed about it because everything you know is over and you have to start pretty much fresh. We're just changing the whole restaurant model to kind of work and be a little more flexible with that to get as much income and reach our customers as much as possible versus just being a dine-in restaurant. We know that restaurants, retail stores, and more are all struggling during this time. However, a business that is often overlooked is nonprofits. Let's speak with Executive Director Maureen Nelson and listen to her thoughts pertaining to the United Way and its role in helping others during this time. The United Way is an agency that was created to um, help nonprofits, help people, help businesses. Um, we are the convener of all of those together. So we um, partner with businesses and government um, to find solutions and funding for nonprofit agencies. We really got hit hard fast because one of our, we're only a staff of two and a half people and one of our staff went down with COVID right away and was out. And then the school closing happened and so my other staff person had to stay home with her kids so she began working from home when she could. So when the need um, of our agencies and people in town grew, our support shrunk. We shut our doors. Um, although the office is staffed, nobody can just walk in. They have to make an appointment so we know that they're wearing a mask and that their hands are clean. And um, I've been able to work in the office every day because of those protections. We have had to cut programming um, because of our income um, plowing. We cut all Imagination Library, which was books for kids from zero to five. And that's, that was a very hard decision. But right now we're, we're concentrating on safety net services, um, food, clothing, shelter, and books just didn't meet that need right now. Um, we are an organization of people who help people. And 
Um, a lot of people who come into us looking for help are often at their wits end and we have a lot of tears and you know we give out hugs and we can't do that anymore so on, so on top of the business part of how we're going to run things um, we're na navigating how are we going to interact with people going forward and how do we um, make people feel welcome and accepted and helped when we can't have contact with them that's all very difficult one thing I think that people um, in the whole scheme of things seem to forget is for people who were already um, before this ever happened who were already on the edge um, this has been devastating so if you were already not eating it's gotten even harder now mm -hmm. um, because yeah. the food shelf is people more people are there using it who hadn't had to use it before the y is closed the library is closed all those public places that used to allow people to come in can't do it so we forget about it as it gets harder for all of us it's way worse for those people who are already living on the edge i think um you know everyone's concerned about businesses going back to normal and and so am i i just wish that um, people understood that nonprofit work is a third, jobs in the nonprofit sector are a third of the economy um, as, as much as manufacturing in America. And this has hit nonprofits just as hard because we rely on, on gifts from people who are not working and they don't have the money to give us. So um, for those who do, who are still working and plugging away, um, remember your favorite nonprofit and remember that they're suffering as well. One business that cannot operate through curbside pickup or through online services is TNT Gymnastics Center. Let's hear from TNT owner Kylie Lindholm and find out how she is coping during this trying time. So TNT Gymnastics is in Red Wing, Minnesota, and we um, are a gymnastics center. We have kids that are 18 months all the way up through the Red Wing High School actually practices um, at our facility and hosts meets um, at our facility. So we have kind of a wide range of kids and ages um, and we offer competitive gymnastics and recreational gymnastics and preschool gymnastics. And I am the owner of TNT Gymnastics. We're unique in the fact that we're not able to offer curbside pickup. Um, we're really not able to offer online gymnastics. Um, we need equipment and the kids don't have equipment at home and, and quite frankly it's just not safe you know we've been we've been completely shut down um with no with no revenue at all for me at least it hasn't necessarily been how we're gonna make it through these weeks months you know um but it's what it's gonna look like when re when i am able to reopen um because essentially I feel like I will have to restructure my entire business plan. And as of now, I don't have any guidance on how to do that. For, for us, for gymnastics, we make money based on how many children are, are in our classes, are in, the, are in the building. So to limit that, you know, if let's say we have to cut our classes in half um, and we have significantly more costs because we have twice as many coaches. And then you think about the, the extra cleaning um, that likely will have to be done. I don't have the financial means to pay a company to do that. Um, you know, we're very, we're a very small business. It's my, my husband and I that own it. We've got two kids um, and we have a awesome staff of, you know, mostly high school kids. So we don't have an HR department. We don't have, you know, janitors or anything like that. That all comes back on us. We have a great community that really supports us and supports gymnastics. We've got about 250 kids that come to TNT every week for classes. Um, so, you know, in this downtime, I've had each one of the coaches make a video um, and they sent it to me and pretty much every week I've been able to post um, one of the coaches videos of them, you know, just giving a little positive message to the kids that they miss them, you know, wash your hands, stay healthy. We're going to be back soon. Just seeing that the community support. Um, I would say, if not daily, um, most definitely weekly, I have one of my families that checks in on me, one of my coaches, hey, how are you doing? I miss the gym so much. I want to be back there. So just knowing that when we are given the okay to reopen, that I'm going to have my people back. 
As you can see, life is looking different for businesses in Red Wing. Even with these unforeseen challenges, these members of the community are keeping their heads up and looking forward to better days ahead.